Hello and welcome to my studio. So today's video is going to be all about how to set up and prepare a painting palette. So I'm going to show you how to lay out all your colors in what order and all of that. And I'm also going to show you how to prepare a wood palette for oil painting specifically. So if you're just interested in knowing what order to put your colors in, um, you can skip ahead to that part in this video. So uh, this is my palette. Oh dear, <laughs> I, I just had some dry pieces of paint fall off of it. Hence, um, why I'm going to be doing this. Um, it's here, I'll just hold it like this. So I was looking at my palette the other day, um, or I should say a couple weeks ago, and realizing I need a new palette. Um, and this happens to me every couple of years or so. I've been using this for quite a while now, um, but I, I have developed some bad habits with my palettes and sometimes not cleaning them as well. And so I, I it was something I, I, I will get better on with my next palette. Um, I kind of know what I need to do with myself to get myself to, to keep it in good shape all the time. Um, but I, I've, I've overall been pretty good, but um, I've just left some uh, paint drying kind of on the side and so it's gotten in the way. And um, I, I will keep it. Um, for sure, because it, it's always handy to have a second palette on hand. Um, but I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you how to set up a new palette because I got myself a new palette and how to prepare it and just what I do for that. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you just the process. So just to give a little background about wood painting palettes, um, it is the most traditional type of painting palette. It's what, um, you know, all those traditional old masters use like Rembrandt, Velasquez, Vermeer, um, you know, the list goes on. All of them used a wood painting palette and you can often see it actually in painting. Sometimes they do self portraits in the studio and they're holding a palette in their hand and it's a wood palette. And that's one of the hallmarks of a palette is that of a wood palette is that it is lightweight. And that's one of the um, very positive attributes of it. And um, why a lot of lands uh, planner painters, landscape painters use wood palettes because they're very easily transportable. Um, they don't break as easily. So personally, I started out with a glass palette, um, not necessarily out of choice, just because in the class I was in, that's what everyone was using. That's what we were told to use. So I was introduced to that and, and used that. Um, but then when I um, graduated from, from that university and kind of moved on, um, I went to a different painting school and I was introduced to a wood painting palette. And I can remember the first time I saw one, it was just incredible to see because it had this beautiful patina on it. It was as smooth as glass. Um, it was just beautiful and had this beautiful color that made it very, it really facilitated color mixing um, in, the, in the sense that it was very muted and so it kind of didn't um, affect your eyes in the way where it didn't trick your eyes so that you could kind of see the colors more as they actually are because of that, um, the color of the, the palettes, the ground. Um, so all, all that to say that that really um, kind of drove me to really want to embrace the wood palettes. And, and also I didn't really have much of a choice because we all kind of had to use it, but it was great because I loved it. And so it, it worked out. Um, so I thought I'd show it to you, give you the opportunity to see if you like that or not. Um, doing wood palette, I do encourage everyone to try. They're not very expensive to buy. You could actually even cut yourself a piece of wood um, any size. It's just, you don't have to buy a, a fancy palette from the art store, you can. Um, you can also just cut a piece of wood, which is something I have done. Um, so this is my um, new palette right here and I will link below um, the link of the this exact type one so if you want to purchase this one you can um, I believe kind of the price ranges from 10 to 16 dollars something like that so it's really not too bad and it's actually the exact same one as this and you can see kind of the color how that changes kind of over time as it develops its patina but I do have an example of a palette here that um, this is from my um, shod box from my kind of planner painting box. I can actually show it to you real quick. 
it's just like kind of the gorilla painter box and it it slides in here and it's kind of fit to go in there so all that to say i am forced um which is a good thing um to to keep good care of this because i know that it would be it would be impossible to really find a replacement for this unless i built my, myself something this exact same dimensions which i don't i i'm not a woodworker i know it's probably would be very simple to do but I don't work with wood, so it would be take a lot of effort for me. So here's an I'll let's say here's an example of one. You can just see how shiny that is, and just how that patina builds up over time, and it creates a very smooth surface to be able to um, work on and mix colors on. And and that's the reason why it kind of builds up that way is because you use oil every time you're done painting. You use linseed oil to wipe off the paint and you kind of rub it into the palette and, and it just builds over time, just slowly, 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 slowly kind of builds one layer on top of the other. So um, now back to this palette that I purchased. Um, the way that you prepare it is that you put, apply five layers of linseed oil on the palette. And so I have actually already done that, but I'm going to show you on the other side how to do it. And so then you will kind of have an idea of just know exactly what to do um, if you're wanting to create one of these. And you can see on the back what the color originally looked like. So here is just um, the, the original kind of ground, um, the raw wood, what it looked like. And then here is much darker. You can see how it has changed significantly um, the color. All right, so I flipped the camera here to show you how to prepare this wood palette. It's super, super simple. So um, it's, yeah, it, it'll be very easy. Now, as I said before, this is already has five layers of linseed oil on it. So, um, but this side has, has nothing. Um, well, besides here where my hand was touching the palette while I was applying the linseed oil on the other side. Um, so I cut myself just a, a little piece of rag from an old piece of clothing right here and I'm it actually has already been used a bit for painting but that's all right and I'm just I'm right here I'm using this linseed oil here I'll link it below so that you can grab it if you're interested it's not the fanciest linseed oil but it's perfectly um, adequate for what we're doing here so I just pour a little this is probably a little bit more than what what we need um, but that's all right um, so I'm just gonna smooth it over the entire kind of surface area. You can see how it's, it's making it darker already. And you don't want um, pools to happen. So right here where you can see there's um, some right here. You, you don't want it to dry that way because it's going to get gummy and you want it to be smooth. So we want to smooth every area out. Kind of press down and make sure that you don't have any drips of linseed oil happening in any area you can just if you kind of go over the entire surface then you'll be sure to kind of smooth everything out all right so i think we got everything so now the important thing is to let this dry adequately so depending on what the air quality is like where you're at uh, with how dry it is how or how humid it is um, it'll take more or less time for it to dry um, a safe bet is just to let it dry um, for 24 hours and then come back to it the next day and then do another coat and then next then the next day another coat um, it could take much shorter so uh, you can kind of touch just kind of at the edge of your board you can touch it if it's still a little bit wet then I would let it dry longer of course and then if it feels dry then you can do another coat and just repeat that until you have five coats and then it'll be plenty um, for, for you to then work off of and then um, do your next, um, yeah, your next layer. And then once you have five, then you then it's, um, it's prepared for your paints. And the reason why this is so important is because it seals the wood. And if you just put um, oil paint onto just plain wood, it will kind of eat through the wood and um, your palette won't last very long. And also it's going, it's going to seep into the wood and it's gonna make it much harder to mix your colors because it's just kind of being absorbed, getting absorbed by the wood. So this kind of puts a layer 
between your paint and the wood itself and kind of just uh, allows your paint to kind of just sit on top of the board versus kind of being drawn into the board. Okay, so now I've set out all of my paints and um, this is the order that I'm going to set up my palette in. So I, there's different ways that you can actually set up your, your colors. And um, th these are the colors I use. Maybe you use um, a smaller amount of colors, maybe use even more. This is actually quite a bit of colors um, just in general, but um, the, the principles will be the same no matter um, what colors you have. And that is, I am setting my colors up um, in the order of light to dark. So I choose to use kind of a value driven um, setup because value is really, really important in painting. It's the most important element in painting. And so that's how I set mine up. Um, so I start from this side to this side. You could have it start from, uh, go from left to right. Um, so it kind of depends on um, what you prefer, what you want to do. I've always set mine up from right to left. Um, you could also put your white in the middle and put your cool colors on one side and your warm colors on the other side. Um, so that that is also another really um, terrific option to do. So for example, you'd have your white here, then you'd have like, let's say your blues, greens, purples over here, then you'd have your reds, oranges, yellows over here. Um, so that, uh, or vice versa, depending on what you prefer. Um, so you could try um, these different options out and see what you like. However, what is important is to stick with one because in a way this is kind of like the painter's keyboard. Um, and, and you want, just like a piano, if the keys get rearranged to a different spot, different place, that would really mess you up quite a bit if you were to play piano. Um, and the same kind of goes for a palette. Um, you want your, your hands um, to, to know automatically because you, so you don't have to think about it really where a color is. Um, just for your mind to know, okay, white's here, the you know, blue's here, dark's here, you know, just that, that kind of thing. It's, it's really helpful for just have a, to um, speed up the flow um, in painting, just to the process to go more smoothly. Um, because there's so many other things to think about um, that are m more important than to wonder where my blue is or where my red is. So whatever you choose, um, stick with it and it'll work really well for you because these um, setups that I mentioned um, are absolutely terrific. And um, because that kind of, that puts your mind in place of thinking about important things like value or color temperature. So I'm going to set, um, just put them on my palette so that you can kind of see the process. So first I'm going to put my white on. And then, you know, white is the, the most used color in, in painting. So I'm going to probably give it more of a generous area on my palette. Um, maybe a little bit more space. Realized I had forgotten my cadmium yellow. I'm just going to put that here. everything is now laid out on the palettes um, and actually this is I think one of the first times this has happened to me where they've all it actually fits into this area really well there's not kind of space left over here I didn't run out of space and go over here because that sometimes happens to me then I have to get out my palette knife and kind of move over the paints to one side so that there's more space um, so yeah so this is um, I, I, I'm getting better over time I guess um, just with knowing how to lay out my paints. Um, but here, so just um, for you to know what the colors are in case you're curious, this is just white. I actually um, usually use Kremnitz white, um, but this is just regular titanium white right here, right here. Cadmium lemon, cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, cadmium red, and this is um, Conacredo magenta. This is cadmium green, this is Veronese green, and this is phthalo green, this is Provence violet bluish, and this is phthalo blue, this is ultramarine blue, and this is um, a purple, um, 
what's it called? Uh, dioxazine purple, that's right. This is, it's actually covered up. You can't even see anything anymore on it. Um, but yeah, this is um, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and then ivory black, which I actually never put ivory black on my palette, but I just got it the other day because um, I'm experimenting with using just small amounts of black because it's very blue, has kind of a bluish hue to it. So yeah this is the setup and again um you could start on the other side like i mentioned before put the white here and just rearrange it that way or white in the middle and then cool colors on one side and warm colors on the other so um either way is a great option and when you do that put the so the white in the middle and then if you decide to put cool colors one side and then warm colors the other side you could arrange them um, again from lightest to darkest um, on either side. So you're still have you're still doing um, you're doing color temperature as well as a value at the same time. So you're kind of getting the best of both worlds in that way. All right, so here's our palettes. Um, so I really do hope that you try this. Um, as you can see, it's it's beautiful too. It's it's really lovely. Um, I do realize that I forgot to show you how to. Um, what you do when you're done with your painting session kind of after you've used the palette you've mixed on it and everything so um let's say you know here mix some blue and again this is going to be just one area but it'll give you an idea of what it um kind of looks like so i'm making a muted blue right here so here we got our mixture on our palette then I'm going to have my rag in my hand right here. I'm going to take, um, I can, I'll either pour the linseed oil just kind of onto the rag like this, or you can pour um, the linseed oil, one moment, here. So here's this, and or, or you can just pour it directly onto the board. And being careful not to, for it to come out, just, <laughs> I don't want a ton to come out. Um, all right, so here then on uh, what you do, I'll hold it up this way. Then you just, so it, you, it's the same as if you have um, just color all over the place. And typically, obviously you don't just have, if you're done with the painting session, unless you're making a blue painting, it's not gonna be just blue, it's gonna be a bunch of colors and it, they're all gonna be mixed together on the palette. And so it's gonna be a bit more of a kind of a, on a brown, honestly, because when you kind of mix all colors together, it turns into some form of a brown. Um, so, but here, it's not gonna stay this way, but for now, it's gonna look a little more on the bluer side. Again, this is gonna build up over time, and it's gonna be really fun to kind of watch how it develops and changes um, as you use your wood palette. It's honestly, it's really, um, you will really enjoy it and it's it's fun kind of using something that's so traditional and just very um, kind of it's raw real materials it's wood that you're working with and painting on and something that's been used for centuries um, for painting so it's very traditionally using very traditional materials and um, with oil paint with on top of another very traditional material so so here you can see now how it has become much less blue. Obviously the epicenter of where we mix it initially is still more blue than the other parts of the palette. But this is gonna, as it builds on top, you're gonna be layering this kind of as you mix and use your palette. It's gonna be multiple layers coming on top of the other and it's going to, over time, like I mentioned before, build this really, really beautiful patina. You're gonna love it and it's gonna be great. The one important thing, I'll repeat it again, I mentioned it before, is to not let um, pools of linseed oil kind of develop and dry on your palette because it's going to build this kind of um, raised area and it's going to be a bit gummy. You want, it, you want to make sure that you smooth everything out and it doesn't take very long. And as you can see, kind of, it doesn't take very long to, to clean the palette, to wipe it up when you're done with your painting session. Um, it's it's quite easy and easy to take care of. So I do hope you give it a try. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comment section below. I'd be very happy to answer. And um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.